it is time I'm gonna boot up that other game, that Blaze Blue game I got the other day, because I want to finally start playing it. This one's not a fighting game, it's like a platformer, which is weird, because there's a jump button and a double jump. And it seems... I don't know, whatever. We'll we'll get into it, we'll see how it goes. I'm intrigued. And the Blaze Blue lore is a hot mess. And I will love to get <laughs> into it. Lore. I will love to get into it. I am from the Sky's Eyes Ace Operation Department. I'm glad you picked up my call. Starting now, I will act as your personal guide in your training to help you along your journey. Huh? I'm glad to be your partner. Who are you? Hello, Acer. Please move to your right for a mind training session. Who are you? Hello, giant big brother screw! Your first That's a scary voice. Who are you? Hello, Acer. I'm an administrator of the world of Ace. You can call me I.O. Congratulations on finishing your first tutorial. Take this analyzer. It will help you unlock the prototype. Thank you. Click Ooh! The video below roster! About each prototype. Once uh, you've selected a prototype, hold unlock prototype to unlock it. Okay, so this is going to be that kind of game. Okay, so we'll just go through these and I'll, I'll explain the lore that I know. It'll be fun. Ragnar's the main character. Normally. This is the main character. And in case you can't tell, he's kind of got evil, dark energy. And his whole- he, he's basically, if you took the protagonist from Berserk and the protagonist from Trigun, and you made them both, like, one character. Because he's- he's- he's overpowered. But he's also, like, incredibly traumatized. He's just, like, the wandering swordsman with the big-ass sword who's wanted by a bunch of people. Big bounty and all that. And he's called the Blood Edge because everyone who tries to get the bounty gets killed. So Noelle is basically, she's sort of... a character. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is she's whatever the plot needs her to be. In some games, she's, like, the magical girl who's the key to everything. In other games, she's just hot, badass girl with guns. In other games, she's just like a TNA fan service with all the other girls. But uh, she almost always is involved in the plot to some extent, even if it's not to like a use useful extent. Number 11 is unironically only the magical girl who's the key to everything. Because the base the base plot at the beginning of Blaze Blue was that there's a time loop on repeat, and said time loop is essentially Ragna turns into Satan and mm. destroys and destroys the universe because his arm is Satan's arm. Because what happened is one of the six heroes who saved the earth hundreds of years ago turned into a bad guy. And so that bad guy came and gave Ragna's brother. Is he here? Yes, he is. This is Ragna's brother. Ragna's brother's sword was given to him by an evil six hero guy. Gave him the sword and made him go crazy every time he's around his brother because of a curse laid on the sword. And so what happened is his brother killed the nun who was watching them. Um sliced off his brother's arm, impaled him on the sword, and then left him in a burning down church. And then one of the other six heroes found Ragna charred and dying and saved him and healed him by skin grafting the devil's arm onto him. Oh. Which I'm like, in the moment, I was like, is that really the best you could do for him? Imagine you had, like, a kidney failure or something, and then you went, like, mm -hmm. unconscious, and then you woke up, and the doctor was like, we just did a kidney transplant, and you're like, oh, cool, who's the donor? And they went, Satan. Like, 
Amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the reason Ragna would turn into Satan is because number 11 was essentially like an artificial human generated in the interest of carrying enough energy to gaslight that transformation by stabbing herself and Ragna and throwing them together into a... Basically a giant magic furnace that would kickstart the apocalypse. Mm. And and the reason that time loop happened is because my favorite character in the series, who is not here... God, this roster is small! Her name is S. <laughs> he is not as he appears when you first meet him mm -hmm. he seems to just be a secretary and he's got that weird like there's no really other way to describe it he's got that weird like stereotype asian-esque expression where he's got like slit eyes and just a small smile you know but it's revealed that he is one of the six heroes from a hundred from like hundreds of years ago like, one of the original people who subdued the Black Beast, and he's, like, the reason everything's going wrong constantly. He's the one who gave Jin the weapon that drives him insane every time he's in the presence of his brother. He's the one who set up Noelle to be, like, a monster weapon girl. He's the one who created Number Eleven with the interest of making her the Calamity Trigger, essentially. He is the mm -hmm. one who set up Ragna to be, like, wanted and basically living in hell his whole life. Ah, yes, the true villain is one of the six heroes. But which one could it be? Wholesome old man werewolf who serves tea to his lolly bunny vampire mistress. Another one is a samurai man with a badass white suit of armor who... Uh, monologues about honor and duty constantly. Another one is a literal child whose only crime is being schizophrenic. Another one is a cat man. Not joking, mm. he's just a cat man who raises orphans in his spare time. Just an overly horny witch. Yeah, Yuki Terumi is uh, a man who the artist whose only skill is subtlety uh, took to drawing him with the facial features of a snake. <laughs> like, he literally just has, like, those slit, glaring, circular eyes that are yeah. also yellow. And then his <laughs> smile does this weird thing where it, like, slants and corners on both sides to simulate fangs. And you're like, ooh, I wonder who the traitor might be. <laughs> Taukaka is a cat girl. But, like, she's more cat girl than you might realize. Like, she's not, like, the weird anime trope that's just incredibly hot chick with ears. She's, like, those big, those big sleeves you see. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not, like, dramatically big sleeves. She unironically has massive paws that she wears giant sleeves as a glove on. And mm -hmm. when she fights, big claws come out at the end of the sleeves. <laughs> Essentially just like a side character, comic relief. But uh, she is an assassin with intense ADHD. Like, she'll go into a town pursuing a bounty. You were introduced when she goes to the main city to try and get Ragna. Mm -hmm. But she forgets about her mission until she sees him. So she's just like messing around chasing shadows and leaves and then like sleeping in sunbeams and then she just sort of like spots him out of the corner of her eye and just decides i'm gonna jump him i was here for him something <laughs> something related to him so i'm gonna jump him i love her dramatic fight cloud physics yeah. like she does like the looney tunes thing yeah yeah see 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 <laughs> yeah. and she made a real noise this is Jin, ragna's brother the crazy kid and uh, he is, he's pretty boring. He's just sort of boring because he's very like stalwart and follows the rules until he sees his brother. After which then he just goes feral, insane and murder horny Hakuman. And uh, I guess I'll just dive into this now. Jin and Hakuman are the same guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason that is 
is because Jin corners Ragna at one point and tries to fight him in like a solitary area. And mm -hmm. Ragna is just so sick of his brother's like chase his brother's chasey murder boner antics. He's just so sick of it by this point in the story. So he just absolutely demolishes him in a fight and like almost kills him and then just leaves. And so what ends up happening is he goes so hard that he tears a hole in like the time space continuum and Jin falls through it and ends up like thousands of years in the future and uh, meets uh, Rachel Alucard, the aforementioned lolly vampire bunny girl who like says, hey, yeah, see this world, how it's on fire it's partly your fault. Here's a mystical suit of armor. Go fix your shit, jerk. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, okay. And so she sends him far back into the past and he becomes Hakumen. This is Kokonoi. She's one of my favorites because she's just angy, nerdy cat girl. And she's very, very mean. She sits behind a computer with a giant lollipop in her mouth and just bitches at you the whole game, and she's awesome. <laughs> she built one of my favorite characters, who's also not in this game! Uh, she built a guy named Iron Tager, and Tager is just this giant red ogre dude, and he got really roughed up by Hazama at one point, so she sort of built him back as a cyborg, and that's the playable version you get. He has a really deep voice. And so when in when in Japanese he's talking to her on his cub link, he goes, Kokonoe. <laughs> and so that's how I think of her name. When I say it, I go, Kokonoe. Dang! Damn! 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 Dang! Dang! How much of the federal budget did that moveset cost? Let's do Ragna. Let's go base character. Okay, that's the same. That's the same. Oh! Deku Spiku! Deku Spiku! I like how one thing I like about him is uh, his attacks all have the shadow effect because he's got the Satan arm. I am not a fan of the rate that my attacks consume HP. Dang, those slimes are just tearing him up over there. Dang. So, note to self, do not grab the buff that makes all your attacks cost. Don't, don't do that. That's bad for your health. Don't do that. I hope I'm supposed to lose. I hope I don't, I hope I don't get back and everyone be like, Dang, you suck, bro. That was the training round. How are you supposed to do anything? First mind upgrade. Oh, you completed the mind upgrade. Do you feel power coursing through you? I feel nothing. All right, so do I... I guess I go back here? Just the difficulty of mind training here. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let's go... Kokomoe. You can inherit from an existing Eva type to get their legacy, talents, and tactics. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I don't know why at one point they stopped dubbing the games, but they just did. But even in her Japanese voice, you can hear her, like, demeaning, dismissive tone. Let's do Meteor Carpet Storm. War Crime Button. Oh my word! She doesn't have a dash! She gets on a scooter! Look at her! It has a cat on the handles! Get him! There we go! Alrighty. Yee. Oh my word, there's so many enemies here. Hold on a sec. Vietnam attack! Oh my word, no! Oh, sheesh. We can do this? Okay. Okay, get back. Heal, just in case. Oh, I fired that the wrong way, that's embarrassing. Uh, my attacks have the same energy as that one Adult Swim skit that's like, Henry Kissinger, war crime attack! We should bomb Cambodia and Laos without telling Congress! Alright, who's the boss? Is there a boss? 
Oh. Looks like there is. Oh my gosh, what the heck? It's El Kraken. <laughs> Defiling Eye. Ooh, did I just upgrade my dash? Oh my word! Okay, I just got significantly less uncomfortable. I totally realized what her uh, victory animation is. Mm. She's not... I thought she was doing something not safe for work with that lollipop. I was wrong. <laughs> she's actually stuffing her face with chips. <laughs> and she's talking and she's talking with her mouth full. I thought she was shoving the lollipop into her mouth really deep and then like talking with it in there. Space Omega. What the heck? What did I just do? Oh my goodness. Bro hits like a tank. Sheesh. Oh my goodness. Well, I did make it pretty darn far on this run. I'm gonna get back. He's gonna be like, wow, that sucked substantially less than last time. Sheesh! There we go. Don't know how I lived that, but I'm not gonna complain. Sheesh! This guy is the full on avatar air bending and earth bending. All he needs is fire and water. Never mind, he has water. Now all he needs is fire. Wait, who died first? Oh, I did. Whoa! Long time no see. What information do you need this time? Huh? Activating phenomena for you now. Oh dear. Oh, they're gonna make me trip! Oh man! I can see everything! I record, organize, and show you the tactics you've collected. You have time to spare now, I can show you right now. Oh, cool! It keeps track of the abilities that you gather through each run, so that way you'll know how close you are to 100%ing it. Which, what was your name again? Dor. His name is Dor. Oh, Dor. No! <laughs> There's no way his legacy is that sad. Why is he breathing like he has the croup? Hey, buddy. Lay it on me. Yeah! I got to launch the counter. Perfect. Now, it's time for the most important part. What will you have me do? Get enough Evo types with requested ratings. Then, come to me again, and I'll guide you to complete your first mind upload. Oh, wow. So this is building to something. What is it? Now come find me. Oh, I already did it? Okay. I cannot carry two of you. Dang! This is insane. This is going crazy. I don't know what this has to do with anything Blaze Blue, but I am very intrigued. like some near automata stuff right here Hello, oh my gosh I'm delighted to finally meet you in person bro is built like the kingpin sheesh what's this 
What the heck? It's a robot flamingo. Hello. A groovy hair. The first Pirates of the Caribbean came out in 2003. Yeesh. Speaking of Chainsaw Man, freaking Deadpool. Yeah, that was pretty weird how Deadpool just referenced Chainsaw Man out of the blue. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it was literally the most random thing that could have been. You're really amused by her, like... Uh, 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 I don't know how hard it is, like, how hard it is to create a Sword Art Online game that is literally just, like, the story. You know, to do a Dragon Ball Z Kakarot thing, you know, but with Sword Art Online. See, that would involve intelligence, and, like, recognizing what they have with the brand. But, like, we all know that they don't do that because all they think is, can we make the girls with fat titties? Yes. Can we make a marginally decent, um, hack and slash? Yes. Can we add a ham-fisted level up no, no, system? No. Also, it's, yes. It's more or less. It's more or less a no. The, the, the... Gameplay in these Sword Art Online games are atrocious. Everybody says Brian Drummond's the GOAT, which I can understand that, but sorry, Jason Griffiths here, here we go! will be fucking iconic. Bow, da da da, bow, 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 da da da, bow, da da da, bow, 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 da da da, ever, ever, nothing will ever be. Elise! Really? Is that the is that the one you're gonna cite? No! My human girlfriend! What the heck? Why is there it's not creepy or anything? Oh it's Arakune! The guy who the bug man! The bug man with the big titty wife! I told you, Jamie! I like how they made him a boss! Oh my word, he does so much damage. I'm dead. As Kokonoe lose to Arakune. I don't know why that's an achievement. Well, let me tell you. Let me see. Pretty good game so far. I'm looking forward to more. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm a little retarded.